And I'm Sonal Bhutra and with me are Ekta Batra and Mangna Malu guys. Good afternoon. afternoon. Uh, well, turning out to be a day better than what was expected. Definitely the SJX Nifty was indicating a downturn, and that is not the case for our own markets. We have recovered after opening in the red for sure and it's the IT space which is leading to some of the gains that we are seeing. We're slightly off uh, from the highs of the day around 27 odd points but nothing really to complain about considering the state of the Asian markets that we saw. US markets again will open for trade today uh, at night and it's uh, some of these FMCG names which are putting some pressure but apart from that uh, continues to be a good day and the mid caps and the banking names they are outperforming today. Hi Sonal, yeah. hi Manglam. Yes absolutely at this point in time it's a quiet day you would have to say for the frontline indices and a lot of the queues are going to start trickling in now that everybody gets back to work across global markets. Um, mid caps and banks are definitely outperforming in today's trading session and a lot of the bank Q3 updates seem to be aiding sentiment. We did mention that in the headline and we'll be talking about it through the show but it seems like advances growth has been in double digits this quarter as well on a year on year basis and that's really aiding sentiment today. A lot of other stocks to watch, Zomato, NDTV, Granules besides the entire banking lot that we will be discussing over the next 60 odd minutes. Hi Mangalam. Hi, uh, you know two things really stand out for me. The fact that uh, the dip was bought, secondly the Nifty Bank doing well. The second half of trade will be extremely important because we have the financial services expiry and uh, the mid cap health is looking much better for two days in a row. So portfolio is feeling better too. We have almost 2000 stocks advancing for about a thousand declining. But let's talk about uh, some of the mid caps itself, we have steel strips on our radar. The company has reported several positive developments over the last few days. Uh, among them are the prepayment of its term debt by about 81 odd crore rupees. We saw the company reporting their December uh, sales as well. Uh, net turnover grew by about 43% in the month of December. And we did see some of the promoter pledge being uh, unpledged as well. We have with us Mohan Joshi, who's the head corporate strategy and investments at steel strips joining in. Thanks a lot, Mohan, for joining in. Wish you and a team a very happy new year. On these developments specifically, if you could tell us, you know, uh, the first part is uh, with the kind of sales that you've seen in the third quarter so far, are you on track to, uh, you know, 41 to 4200 crore sales that you had guided for on a domestic basis and about 600 to 650 crores on exports in FY23? Thanks a lot for having me and wishing the entire CNBC team a very happy new year. Uh, so, uh, with the third quarter almost closed, uh, we are fairly confident that 4100 to 4200 crore should happen within this financial year. For the EBITDA uh, guidance that we had already prepared and uh, guided this street, uh, we are fairly optimistic that we are going to be doing that. Uh, I think from the perspective of exports, uh, it's always uh, a tough story to tell and to digest. Uh, but monthly, month-on-month uh, -month improvement is already underway and we feel that the Q4 exports is going to be the best for the company uh, as against the past uh, gone by three quarters and we feel that the momentum is going to be spilling over into the next financial year which is 23-24 on the back of exports of alloy wheels also. Okay, uh, so let's talk about the pledge as well because the promoters have been able to give up some of the pledge or release pledge that is as per the latest filing. Can you tell us out of this 13.9% that is left as pledge from the promoters, uh, how much will be released this year as well? well when will you see zero pledge on books here? See, the uh, guidance that we have given to the street is for the next financial year that we'll try to make it zero. And we are making every bit of progress every quarter, which is uh, a positive sign. And the intent is uh, fairly very clear, shared with all the investors for closure in next financial year. Okay, all right, Mohan, we're going to leave it on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and speaking with us. So that is Steel Strip Wheels, the first corporate on our show. Well, for the markets, it's a quiet day, but we have a lot of corporates in focus. We're going to take a short break, but on the other side, we're going to touch base with Granules India, which is, uh, you know, uh, in focus on account of a strategic partnership with Greenco Zero C. So more details on that partnership once we're back. Stay tuned. It's a good CEO from a great CEO. CNBC TV 18, in partnership with McKinsey, has arrived at a definitive list of India's top CEOs. And the first CEO to make our short list is. 
Stevie Narendran took over as the MD of Tata Steel in 2013 when the company was in danger of a collapse. Today, Tata Steel is the most profitable company in the Tata Group. I think nothing is impossible. I mean, that's the way I look at it. You know, it's just a question of being prepared for it and working on it, and uh, we can make things happen. The Winning Mindset, the CEO Guidebook, only on CNBC TV 18. किस बात की सेंचुरी एम डी एफ का लो एमिशन प्रीमियम प्लस है ना हायर डेंसिटी है वाटर रेजिस्टेंट भी है यानी ये है जहाँ नो टेंशन वहाँ लो एमिशन प्रीमियम प्लस बाई सेंचुरी प्रोवुड यार अजय लुक एट डैड विल वी बी द सेम एट हिज एज एब्सोल्युटली यस इफ वी प्लान आर फ्यूचर लाइक हिम हाउ माई फादर हैड इन्वेस्टेड इन एल आई सी जीवन अक्षर which गिव्स इमीडिएट एंड गारंटीड एनिटी एट रेगुलर इंटरवल्स दैट टू फॉर लाइफ वाओ But do we have to wait until his age? Absolutely not. We recently invested in LIC's new Jeevan Shanti, which gives deferred annuity, which means regular income after some years. I see. Uh -uh. <laughs> LIC. LIC's annuity plans give ten annuity options and flexibility in receiving regular income. LIC. Har pal aapke saath. Pandi chai. हमारे पास बादाम है, किशमिश है, काजू है, आक्रोट है. तुम्हारे पास क्या है? मेरे पास सलो है गर्मा गर्म चाय सेलो वैक्यू स्टील की थर्मोसील टेक्नोलॉजी रखे गर्म को गर्म और ठंडे को ठंडा 24 घंटे ये ठंडा भी रखता है ठंडा लस्सी पिएगा सेलो वैक्यू स्टील फ्लास्क रखे गर्म या ठंडा 24 घंटे सा पॉलीमर्स लिमिटेड IPO of 1 crore 2 lakh equity shares of face value of 10 rupees each with price band of 61 rupees to 65 rupees per share offer opens on friday december 30 2022 and closes on wednesday january 4 2023 for risk factors and details please refer to the offer document available on the websites of sebi pantomath capital the book running lead manager and the stock exchanges Welcome back. Well, it is definitely a quiet day, but we have a lot of stocks which are in focus. So I'm going to be talking about Granules, which has in fact uh, entered into a strategic partnership with Greenco Group. This is to collaborate for green molecule solutions and its wider applications in pharmaceuticals. Uh, just to put it into perspective, the company said that they will be commissioning a project in a phase-wise manner and the estimated project cost is around 2000 odd crores over the next 5 years we do have mr krishna Pr prasad of uh, granules who is the cmd joining in to discuss this and more uh, mr krishna prasad hi welcome to the show thank you very much for joining in and wishing you a very happy new year as well uh, if you could just start by telling us uh, you know what is the thought process be behind this strategic collaboration Uh, a very happy new year to you too and uh, as far as we go granules has always been working on and sort of uh, dreaming about making the world green and one of our main objectives we have been uh, supplying medicines to the people healing people so far but one of our key objective is also to heal the planet and the only way to do that is to supply medicines which are green and with zero carbon footprint so this has been in the works for quite a while but one of the key requirements for us is carbon free energy and from carbon free energy we could go into hydrogen carbon free hydrogen and then there are so many other molecules that can be made from hydrogen like ammonia so many other things so we were watching green co grow and get into uh, storage of energy and take a leadership in uh, carbon free energy so we were working with them for quite a while and finally we have come to this understanding that not only green and carbon free energy they'll also supply us uh, hydrogen ammonia and many a few other chemicals based on these building blocks okay and we in uh, on our part plan to make apis starting all the way from basic chemicals like if uh, we get ammonia from on ammonia we could make nitric acid or green co themselves are willing to make nitric acid for us 
and all the way for paracetamol, let's say example of paracetamol and metformin, we would make all the intermediates and the starting materials for intermediates at one source. And the only product for these two uh, APIs that will be sourced outside is benzene. Mm. And that also we're working on how to make benzene green. Mm. So the whole objective is to offer green medicines as we go by. Okay. Paracetamol metformin being the first two. Okay, all right. That point is taken and, uh, you know, kudos to the initiative, uh, sir. But, you know, I, just to get more perspective in terms of the possible incentives attached to this, because I'm sure you've looked at the finance uh, part of it, uh, you know, what might the incentives be? What would the cost of production be in this case? Cost of production I could be a little higher, not drastically higher. And as we go by, it could be matching with conventional operations too. This is something, at least for paracetamol and uh, uh, metformin, I can talk about. Possibly it will be just 5% higher than uh, what uh, we could get by conventional sources. The advantage being that we are getting uh, carbon free energy at reasonable prices from green coal. That's the biggest advantage. Until we had this, we would not, not have been able to compete. Okay, so when you're talking about carbon-free energy, and that's something that you're getting from Mr. G uh, from uh, Green Co, Mr. Prasad, uh, you're talking about a 2,000 crore rupee capex over five years. How do you plan to finance it? What does it do to your debt profile? In addition to 2,000 crores, we have some more, some more capex coming in for our formulation facilities, expansion, and other things. Altogether, it could be about 2,400 crores for the next five years. So we are quite confident that we could uh, generate a substantial part of it by internal accruals. And uh, if required, we could take some small debt. Uh, but the major thing is uh, this particular initiative is being taken up in a subsidiary of granules, mm -hmm. which will be totally focused on green products, green chemicals and green APIs. So in this company, after a while, if required, we don't see the journey ending here. There will be many more products coming up. So after a while, we, we could raise equity. There's a lot of interest from many people in participating in equity, but uh, we are not in a hurry. That's an interesting point that you've made that uh, you could see uh, you know some sort of equity raising in this subsidiary going forward. That's about the subsidiary, but since we have you with us, Mr. Chigurpati, I mean, is there any plans of the promoters also uh, raising some money by divesting some of their stake uh, at, a, at a parent level. We ask this to you every time, mm -hmm. and since you brought it up that you know you will be raising some equity for uh, equity for the subsidiary, I just wanted to clear the air on that. No, absolutely no idea, no idea of uh, promoters uh, uh, liquidating any of it. No, no, no deal brewing in granules in 2023, right at the parent level. So sorry, I didn't get you. No deal brewing uh, in granules in 2023, right? No, 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 absolutely no idea. No, no proposal. Okay, like okay. That. So let, let's talk about this itself. Uh, you know, could you give us a sense of uh, the economic viability of uh, this step that you're taking? I mean, is it, uh, uh, you know, is it going to increase your costs? We understand the social benefits of uh, a greener world, but from a business standpoint, does it mean higher costs? Do consumers have to pay more or will you take a hit on the margins? Or will it mean lower costs for you and margin improvement? It definitely will not be a very high cost, maybe possibly 5% more than what we would do with conventional mm -hmm. uh, methods. And uh, that is without taking any uh, carbon credits into account or any other incentives that may be offered. Without taking any of these things, it, it could just be possibly 5% higher. Okay. And if you just look into the carbon credits that we could get, the fungible credits which could be, we could use across or uh, and cash them, I think it could possibly be the same cost or uh, uh, or maybe a little less. Okay. But the whole idea here is to give this green solutions and also to build up capacities mm -hmm. which will be very substantial part of the world requirement. And these plants will be... Uh, huge plants, possibly for each product, they'll be the largest plant in the world. And we expect that when I say substantial capacities, uh, they will be upward of 50% of the world requirements. And okay. that will be really contributing to the greenness of the world. And at this scale, the cost, I uh, don't think, will increase. Okay. Will all additional capex be green? Uh, uh, 
I would say 85% of it will be green. Okay. I just... is always ongoing, may not be, but the objective is as we go by, uh, Granules will have to transform itself into a green company and possibly shut down some of their own old plants. Okay. Uh, you know, Mr. Krishnan Prasad, I just wanted to end this conversation by asking you about uh, what's taking place with regards to the demand for your current core molecules, which is, you know, paracetamol, metformin, ibuprofen at this point in time. The reason I'm asking is that because there's been a surge of COVID cases in China and there's this fear that there might be shortages taking place, there might be a rise in prices when it comes to, say, the intermediates as well. Can you just tell us what the on-ground situation is? The demand for these products is really skyrocketing. Uh, prices have not really shown much of an increase, but the demand is high. And uh, China, there's been talk of China restricting exports of uh, these products. It hasn't happened so far. But if at all it happens, I think there's going to be shortages of these products uh, across the world. When you say demand has risen by how much, can you quantify that as well? in terms of percentage uh, and the timeline? No, the numbers I cannot say, but we see a lot of interest, people asking us for more material. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, more capacity. We are ramping up a little capacity in the existing plants, but uh, uh, I cannot put a number on what is the increase. This is all very volatile. You know, What is happening in China, nobody knows. Mm -hmm. and, uh, as we go forward, maybe we will have a better idea. Okay. Okay. And these are evergreen molecules. They somehow paracetamol is so surprising. Mm -hmm. It's got so much importance during COVID period <laughs> and looks like it's going to continue. Well, I think, uh, you know, Mr. Krishna Prasad, besides COVID, we have a whole host of other issues to worry about. Uh, in fact, the US has probably seen one of the worst flu seasons ever in uh, years. So it's just more than COVID that, you know, you probably need paracetamol for going forward. But thank you very much for joining in and talking to us and giving us your perspective as well as uh, the details on this particular strategic collaboration. Well, for the markets, it's a quiet day, so we're going to do one thing. We'll take a break, but up next, um, technicals lined up. Stay tuned. Back, you're watching us here on Halftime Report. It is that time where we're seeing some bit of a sell-off from the top. In fact, the Nifty has now moved into the red. The Nifty Bank's outperformance is also, uh, you know, it, while it is still outperforming, holding barely in the green, we are seeing uh, it come off highs and the mid-cap index too is currently in the red. What are uh, the stocks which are taking the Nifty lower right now? We do have a lot of these FMCG names. Uh, <coughs> Reliance actually should come up for you apart from all the other FMCG names. Reliance by virtue of its weight. Reliance and LNT, both of them are uh, the ones that have uh, that are responsible for dragging the Nifty lower. Reliance is at the low point, corrected about uh, a percent from the highs, and LNT is the other one which too has moved to the low point of trade. But uh, by and large, you know, the Nifty Bank is still outperforming. Let's talk about uh, the happenings in the FNO space right now. We are seeing the advance decline for the second day running in favor of advances. The Nifty Bank is above, uh, uh, you know, its 20-day uh, moving average as well of 43,155 odd so that uh, 43,155 odd should be an important support to watch out for. For the Nifty, the 18,200 put writers are still active in today's trading session and uh, that would mean that the 18,200 put which has a premium for almost 100 odd rupees would mean that 18,100 would be an important support to watch out for. We are constantly seeing some writing at the 18,100 put as well. So 18,050 to 18,100 is a level where bulls are seeking support, notwithstanding the decline that we've seen right now. The reason why the Nifty would have fallen is that at higher levels, it is running into resistances. We have the 20-day moving average as well as the 50-day uh, moving average between 18,200 and 18,300. So those would be important resistance marks to watch out for, which is why we continue uh, continuously saw a fair amount of writing at the 18,250 call. Almost 50 lakh shares in open interest at the 18,250 call for a premium of 50 rupees, telling you that 18,300 would be a resistance. Important uh, index to watch out for for the second half, like we've been pointing out, will be the Nifty Financial Services. It is uh, upwards of 18,253. Let's watch out for the 18,500 mark as well, primarily because it has uh, the weekly expiry on this index. What are the couple of stocks that you have to watch out for today? HDFC Bank as well as Bajaj Finance, because these two have a heftier weight on this index and both of them are also expected to report their pre-quarter updates. So some positioning around that would be something that we'll be watching out for. But uh, how does that pan out for uh, the technicals of the market? Sachi Anand Utekar joins in. Sachi, 
Wish you a very happy new year. You join us for the first time in 2023. Your thoughts for the market right now and individual stocks? Uh, good afternoon, Mangalam. Mangalam, uh, happy new year to you, uh, the entire team at CNBC TV18 and all its viewers. Well, uh, uh, if you look at the uh, last uh, you know, a few weeks, uh, we have clearly been on the sell on rise mode. Uh, the journey f or the pullback from 17,780 has been really good. But on its way up, we also saw a dark cloud cover kind of formation on the 30th of December uh, you know, price action. So clearly the resistance at 18,265 is significant. And until unless we don't see a closing getting established above the same, the pattern implication would be on the bearish side. So again, you know, uh, uh, if you look at last two trading sessions, uh, you know, Nifty is managing itself within the five DEMA support, which is at around 18,150, and the 20 DEMA resistance around 18,260. So even today, the price action was somewhere within this particular range itself. So right now, uh, we clearly see that uh, the indicators or the trend strength uh, indicators are still favoring, uh, you know, uh, fresh short positions. So right now, I think the pullback is uh, another opportunity uh, to create some short share. Uh, journey towards 18,200 should be utilized to create fresh shots. The stop loss should be placed at around 18,280 on a closing basis. And we are expecting uh, the Nifty to again slide back towards 18,040 levels. So as of now, I think uh, it's better to uh, deploy some shots. Uh, we are near to that resistance zone and the reward to risk is favoring uh, fresh uh, shots itself. Okay, and what would your individual technical picks be? Well, uh, if you look at Maruti, I think uh, the structure has been clearly on the negative side. Again, we saw it slipping below its five-day exponential moving average, which is placed at around 8380. Uh, it also surpassed uh, or uh, breached below the previous day swing low. So we are expecting further weakness to seep in. Uh, fresh shots to be deployed in Maruti with a stop loss at around 8430 and a pattern target of around 8120. Okay. Can you quickly tell us what your... Uh call would be on a lot of these banks, say South Indian Bank, which is up 5%, CSB, which is up around 6 odd percent. A lot of them are reacting to positive news, but technically, how would you approach them? I think when it comes to uh, PSU banks, you know, we've already seen a good, strong outperformance. But if you look at uh, Nifty uh, Bank itself, we are seeing that uh, the resistance around 43,300 is significant. If you look at uh, the, a stock like SBI, which is the prime leader within this particular pack, it has been facing a lot of resistance around 620. So I think this is a good time to, you know, reduce your long exposure and probably look at, uh, you know, uh, taking some contract bets uh, near to this resistance zone. So right now, uh, we stick to the FNO guys. I think SBI is one particular stock which has given us a great, a good pullback uh, move, and probably a move below 605, it can again start, uh, you know, uh, trending lower. So we are, uh, you know, cautious uh, when it comes to PSU names, and uh, SBI would be our top pick on the sell side. Okay, all right. Uh, we're going to take a break on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and talking to us. Well, on that note, let's get in some important market opinion coming in from Sridhar Sivaram of Inam Holdings. Take a break and be back. View for 22 was, it's a tough year. I don't think it's changed much for 23. That macroeconomic, uh, uh, you know, data still not looking very favorable for a global bull market. So this is going to be another challenging year. Like we saw in 22, we'll see a lot of ups and downs at least for the first six months. That's that's our view, at least that's my view, that it's better to protect capital again in the first six months and take a call post that. Financials, our view remains that it's possibly on a sweet spot right now. Uh, I mean, uh, big bankers like, you know, Mr. Uday Kotak said we are a, it's a Cinderella moment and I don't dispute that because uh, it's not just the loan growth. Actually, the bigger delta is the credit cost. When you speak to people in the banking sector, they tell you that it's not only the corporate sector which is not seeing the credit cost, even the retail, for whatever reason, strangely enough. In fact, our view is there's a K-shaped recovery. We should see retail NPAs coming through because if, if the lower half is not, uh, you know, participating in the growth, then there should be NPAs there. We think credit cost is going to be significantly lower. As a result, the earnings growth for banks will be significantly higher. As a result, we will see upgrades in financials. I think we're starting to engage with a lot of these companies uh, because a lot of the froth is out. Uh, we think growth will come back maybe in the second half. 
so we need to be ready with our analysis on which are the good companies and what is the right price to enter some of them what is the business model do they have a path to profitability if a lot of this fits in uh, i'm not against any of the new age companies some of them are really good companies question is what is still tune into half time report on cnbc tv 18 yes there's some selling pressure that's coming in from the top and it's the mid cap index that has turned into the red right now we also have the nifty bank which has come in under a bit of a pressure so uh, stock specific action is something that we are watching out for as we speak and zomato is the one that i'm focusing on it's under pressure as ceo and co-founder has resigned so a lot of resignations here on at zomato mangla four resignations four major resignations in uh, the last uh, few months itself and this apart from the layoffs that the company has offered across uh, the board announced across the board already this one comes in uh, from the co-founder and CTO Gunjan Patidar Patidar of course was one of the first few employees of the company and he was responsible for building the core tech systems for Zomato this uh, by itself wouldn't have been as big a he headline because usually you know CTOs have uh, strong teams etc for the systems to running even at their exits and succession in uh, CTOs isn't very difficult but in light of the other exits that have happened recent exits from Zomato we had uh, co-founder Mohit Gupta resign and the company is not looking for a successor for him new initiatives had Rahul Ganju has resigned as well and intercity legends had Siddharth Jhawar too tendered his resignation in uh, the last few months itself so in light of that four co-founder head senior level positions being vacated is something that the street does not like and the stock is underperforming however now all eyes on what the vertical heads do from here on deepinder goel who's obviously the founder is uh, directly leading food delivery and all the other uh, you know businesses around it albinder dinsa is heading blinkit so uh, you know that's where uh, Uh, that's where uh, the uh, responsibility ends and hyperpure has been headed by rakesh ranjan so this is the new management format of zomato so apart from these three if there is any other resignation we will watch out for that but any of these god forbid resign then that would be a big uh, you know a uh, big blow to zomato for sure okay so as of now the stock is yes. down 2 and a half or percent thanks manglam for that well that is the fourth resignation coming through for zomato in the recent past but let's move forward then emphasis is in focus ambit capital has recommended to accumulate the stock we have reema here to tell us why thanks so much for that so ambit has come out with a note on emphasis and they say that one should use the near term pain to accumulate the stock and here is the reason why so now emphasis is an it services company but it gets more than 50% of its revenues from the banking and financial services in that the company has exposure to the mortgage business the us mortgage business and the us mortgage business has been hit on account of rising interest rates so typically when interest rates go up there will be fewer applications for company banks to process because people are looking to uh, the number of refinancing the, the amount that you would look to refinance would come down so as a result of which the us mortgage uh, refinancing applications came down and this was a hit to uh, emphasis according to ambit the hit to uh, emphasis mortgage business was close to 45 million dollars per quarter and that is nearly 10% of their overall revenue due to this emphasis stock underperformed the rest of the it peers but now according to um, ambit there is a possibility that the us mortgage business is close to bottoming out and plus ambit's expo sorry emphasis exposure to the us mortgage business has also come down to just 3 to 4% uh, so given all these facts the fact that us mortgage business is close to bottoming out perhaps in the next one year things should improve the stock has been an underperformer vis-a-vis the other it companies its valuations to now at 18.8 times forward multiple is trading at a more than 20% discount to other similar side peers like coforge lti mindry and therefore ambit says that q3 we could see some disappointment on the back of again the us mortgage business being weak higher furloughs etc but their recommendation is that add on result related disappointment and that's resulted in the stock uh, gaining in trade today back <coughs> Okay all right Prima thank you so much for joining us so that's on emphasis the stock is uh, buzzing in trade today but a whole host of banking stocks are also in focus on the back of their quarter 3 business updates Abhishek Kothari is here with the details 
Uh, well, Federal Bank, to begin with, has seen strong deposit momentum this time around. So the deposit growth YOY is perhaps the best in last 10 quarters. And on a sequential basis, that is quarter on quarter, it's the best in seven quarters. YOY, the growth is 14.8%, while sequentially, the growth is nearly about 6.5%. They have lost out on CASA ratio, which is now dipped down to 34.25% when compared to 36.4% in the previous quarter. Loan growth remains healthy uh, at 19.1% YOY and about 4.3% sequentially. Remember that in Q2 also, they had a strong base in terms of loan growth momentum on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Credit deposit ratio, that's declined a bit to 84.9% versus 86.7% in the previous quarter. CSV Bank has been taking away the shield in terms of, uh, you know, uh, gold performance or gold loan growth from the NBFC segment. So deposits are up nearly 19% YOY and about 8% sequentially. The CASA ratio, that's declined sharply to 31.4% when compared to 34.3% in the previous quarter. Loan growth momentum has been pretty strong at about 25.7% YOY and about 5.6% sequentially. This is largely led by the fact that gold loans uh, growth was really robust at 50.8% YOY and about 9.3% sequentially. So you are seeing an increase in the gold loan portfolio share uh, to about uh, 47% versus 45.5% in the previous quarter. So X of gold loan, the portfolio growth or the loan growth is around 9.5% YOY and about 2.5% sequentially. Back to you. Abhishek, uh, we're not done yet though. You are tracking a few more banking stocks uh, because of their updates. Uh, which are those? Uh, well, Manglam, uh, to begin with, uh, Karnataka Bank has seen an improvement in, in its credit deposit ratio. Uh, deposits are low over there in terms of the growth momentum, growing a little under 8% YOY and about 3.6% sequentially, while the loan growth has been healthy at 12.4% YOY and about 4.4% sequentially. The CASA is up 10% YOY by almost flat on a sequential basis. CASA ratio has declined on a sequential basis, 31.9% when compared to 30 2.8% in the previous quarter. However, CD ratio has improved, that is credit deposit ratio is up on a sequential basis. Now, Bank of Maharashtra, over the last few quarters, what you are noticing in its uh, business momentum is that it is gaining market share and better than many of its peers in the PSU banking space. So, deposits are up 11.7% YOY and about 6.5% sequentially. Loan growth continues to be impressive and strong, up about 21.8% YOY and 6% quarter on quarter. The CASA has declined this time around, down about 0.7% uh, quarter on quarter. So the CASA ratio has declined sharply given the fact that other retail deposit and term deposits has grown massively. CASA ratio is down to 52.5% when compared to 56.3% in the previous quarter. CD ratio, that is credit deposit ratio, that remains healthy at 75.4% when compared to 75.7% in the previous quarter. South Indian Bank, the deposit growth is weak. However, CD ratio August well for healthy PNL that you can expect this time around. So deposits is up 2.7% YOY and about 2.5% sequentially. The CASA ratio has dipped a bit, 33.8% when compared to 34.6% in the previous quarter. CD ratio is at 77.4% uh, when compared to 76.8% in the previous quarter. Loan growth pretty uh, robust in terms of YOY up about 18.5% YOY and about 3.2% sequentially. Back to you. Okay, all right, Abhi. Thanks very much for that. The work for the banking sector has begun when it comes to Q3 FY23, but it started on a positive note, definitely. We'll take a short break. On the other side, more stocks and food. Welcome back. Well, it's definitely a quiet day. The mid-caps as well as the banks have given up a lot of their gains from the highs. But just watch out for a couple of these COVID-19 related stocks. So I just want to point out something like a Metropolis, which is up around 3 odd percent. Walkhart, which is buzzing. Remember that they have had a tie-up in the past with the UK government when it's come to the AstraZeneca vaccine. Ipka Labs, which is up around 2.2%. So a couple of these stocks should be on your radar just in terms of what they are doing uh, possibly with the COVID-19 related theme. But let's talk about a couple of more stocks. PSP Projects is on our radar today. The company has emerged as the lowest bidder for a government project, which, which is worth over 1,300 crores. Vivek Iyer is here with the details on this, Vivek. 
Well, that's right. So PSP projects, an important order been coming in for the company. As you mentioned, it's emerged as the lowest bidder for a government project. This is uh, in Surat in Gujarat, and the value of this particular order or the value of that particular bid was a little over 1350 crores. Now, just to give some perspective in terms of how important this is for the company, remember the company earlier had mentioned that they are expecting orders worth a little over 2500 crore in FY23. And already till December 2022, the company had received orders of close to 19 crore. So at this point of time, there is a risk that the company may be able to overshoot its stated guidance. In fact, the order inflow guidance of 2,500 crore for FY23 is something that, you know, post, if you take into account this particular order, my, my company will be able to overshoot. On the back of that, PSP project is the stock that's clearly buzzing in the trading session. Okay, all right. Okay, Vivek, uh, thank you for all those details. But Primal Pharma is the other stock which is higher in trade today. Jefferies has initiated a coverage on the stock. Ekta, tell us more. Well, yes, uh, Pyramal Pharma is buzzing today. It's had a good week till now, so up around 1.6% in today's trading session as we speak. In, uh, Jefferies has initiated a buy with a target price of 150 rupees. According to them, the contract drug manufacturing company or the segment of that uh, of the company is at the cusp of a turnaround. Headwinds faced over the past 12 to 18 months are now getting resolved at this point in time. Uh, they estimate that uh, there could be a 12% revenue CAGR and a 21% EBITDA CAGR. And uh, that would be between FY22 to FY24. What is that based on? A CDMO turnaround, steady growth for complex hospital generics, and the scale-up of their consumer health business. On an EV to EBITDA basis, they're trading at around, it's trading at around 13.3 times FY24 estimates and around 10.6 times FY25 estimates. So that's on Pyramid. All right. Uh, Ita, thanks a lot for that. Pyramid, two days in a row has been buzzing around today on account of the initiation coming in from Jefferies. With that, we'll sit into a short break. On the other side, we talk all things commodities. Manisha Gupta, as always, joins in. With her would be Sunil Katke, who's the head commodity retail at Kotak Securities. And joining us now is Sunil Katke from, uh, uh, he's head commodity retail at Kotak Securities. Uh, Sunil, hi, good to have you. You know, what I want to discuss is about the year gone by and we've seen uh, so much of uh, hits and misses onto this one, suspensions of various commodities that have continued into next one year as well. How would you look at the reading on how commodity derivative markets have been for the year gone by? Uh, hi, Manisha, good afternoon. Uh, see, commodity uh, derivative markets have done well in 2022. I mean, if we say uh, participation-wise or volume-wise, uh, commodity uh, volumes compared to the previous year have gone up by 70%. Even the number of participants at exchange-traded uh, commodities has gone up by, uh, you know, the similar number, 65 to 70%. Uh, thanks to the introduction of options contract, because earlier the liquidity or participation in options was not there. Uh, but now it is gaining momentum and obviously that is contributing uh, to the growth of uh, the, the derivative traded uh, commodity uh, that are uh, that are that are you know actively traded now so uh, so if we see uh, what are the other factors that have impacted uh, these these uh, surge in volumes of say 65 to 70% is like the, the russia ukraine war that uh, that created a turmoil in global supply and demand for major commodities especially the energy related products uh, that led to a lot of volatility now these volatilities do uh, you know, grab the attention of a lot of traders. You know, these traders tend to use the futures and options instruments to to make the most of the opportunities that are available. Mm -hmm. So, all in all, if we see uh, the global un un uh, you know uh, economic uncertainties that we saw, uh, the inflationary related concerns that we saw across the globe, uh, uh, Fed's uh, you know counter attack on you know taking down the inflation, uh, the rate hikes that we saw, you know that led to a lot of volatility in precious metals, be it gold, silver. Uh, industrial commodities also uh, have been volatile. Yes. Even the energy, uh, you know, segment was the most active one uh, during 2022. Sure. And obviously, these uh, uncertainties have actually given uh, an opportunity for traders to make the most of it. And uh, you know, like like I said, 70% increment in one year time compared to the previous year is a good number. And uh, retail participation is also good, uh, you know gaining momentum uh, in the Indian, in, in, uh, you know, in the Indian market. And we are very much positive that similar momentum will will continue in 2023 as well. Mm. Well, that's mostly about uh, true about the non-agro space, but the agro commodities clearly have a bit of a hit and a miss there. Uh, with seven commodities in suspension, we have seen the futures volumes go down there. What is it that you're watching for when it comes to agriculture as a space uh, for 2023? See, I think currently very limited commodities on the agri space are available for trading, uh, be it Guar complex or uh, we have, say, Spice complex. Apart mm. from that, 
uh, you know, we don't have the pulse complex available in the market right now. We do not have the soya complex or edible oil complex that is available. Uh, I think uh, majority of the uh, industrial uh, participants or the value chain participants were looking forward to uh, see some relaxation from uh, the government side to to see these you know contracts getting launched again on the uh, you know uh, electronic traded exchanges. But right. unfortunately, uh, you know the time horizon is extended by one more year, uh, considering uh, the volatility in these uh, commodities. Uh, it is a bit uh, unfortunate uh, for the physical participants because they currently do not have a platform where they can actually hedge their commodity uh, price risk. The physical uh, price risk, uh, you know, uh, ideally hedging uh, was was a major uh, uh, concern uh, for for uh, you know the physical participants. If they don't have a platform where they can they they cannot hedge their physical price risk, then it becomes a challenge. I mean, uh, ideally, uh, large industries do not go by. Uh, you know, keeping their open positions uh, by by exposing their uh, business uh, margins to sure. the commodity price risk. So, what happens mm. to these participants? They'll have to look for international exchanges. Mm. Ideally, they move their hedging requirements to uh, foreign markets. So, by doing that, uh, we are you know degrading our domestic market. So, ideally, we are very much confident. Maybe government will look into these things, and uh, over a period of time. Uh, they will come out with uh, you know uh, you know these contracts getting relaunched. Mm. Currently, it is being ex uh, you know extended. Uh, I mean, the ban is ban being extended year, yes. by one more year, but hopefully, they should uh, look into the same. Absolutely, so Neil. Also, uh, I mean, as you said, there has been a 60 to 70 percent of a jump up when we look at participation, even volumes for that sense. Would you say much of that really comes in from options? Is index also picking up the index, index trading that is? Uh, yes, Manisha, I think options has been a game changer uh, because the, the the future contracts are capital intensive. Like uh, in order to uh, take a futures contract position, you'll have to invest what 10 to 20% of the contract value, which I mean, in case if I take an example of gold, for example, uh, one lot gold, if you want to buy or sell on a future contract, you'll have to invest what 5 lakh rupees as a margin money. Uh, normally, an individual may not come with that uh, hefty amount to, to trade in commodities. Ideally, a retail investor would look forward to uh, start trading with, say, uh, 50,000 or 1 lakh rupees margin money. So, options give him that uh, you know flexibility where they can take a call option or they can take a put option by paying 1, 2, 3 percent of the contract value. Say, with 25, 30,000 rupees, also somebody can trade in uh, you know uh, these, uh, these commodity options. So, this is where uh, I see uh, a huge opportunity in place. Uh, if we compare commodity derivatives with that of uh, you know the equity derivatives market, uh, it is not even close to half half a percent of the kind of volume that we see on Nifty and Bank Nifty uh, you know uh, options on the futures and options space. Uh, so coming two to three years time, if I if I look at it uh, from from uh, from the commodity space, I believe uh, that uh, commodity space is gaining uh, a lot of attention because uh, now digital. Uh, platforms are gaining momentum. A lot of uh, awareness-related activities are going on. A lot of influencers are also taking mm, yeah. uh, a lot of uh, you know digital in initiatives to educate people. So I feel uh, over a period of time, people will uh, come into commodity market, and uh, we anticipate that this market in the next uh, two to three years uh, time horizon has a scope to grow by five to ten times right. uh, from, from the. Okay. Five to ten times. That's uh, that's what I'll ask. But again, like uh, you said, Sunil, that you know. Uh, Globally, commodity derivatives are way bigger than equity derivatives. In India, it's, of course, uh, just about 50% or less than that, uh, uh, based on the numbers that you're talking about. Manisha, Sunil, thank you so much for joining in. Sunil, wish you a happy 2023 as well. With that, uh, we're out of time on this edition of Halftime Report. You stay tuned. The Nifty Bank and the Mid-Cap Index have inched back into the green. Let's see what happens to the other indices.